Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today, as it gets cooler and darker and drier here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are making a indulgent, rich, moisturizing almond oat emulsified body butter. This formulation is a continuation of the almond oat series that I have been sharing throughout 2021. So if you'd like to find some other almond oaty formulations, there's a soap and a body wash bar and an all natural lotion and, and quite a few other things. I have linked to those in the partner blog post. So make sure you are scrolling down, clicking through and giving that a read. Our oil phase is primarily a blend of almond oil, the almondy part of our <laughs> series of our formulation, and then some rich, gorgeous shea butter. I've used a blend of stearic acid and cetyl alcohol to thicken this formulation. I often use cetyryl alcohol for this purpose and then tell people that if they don't have cetyryl, they can use a blend of stearic and subtle. So this time I'm doing it kind of the other way around and I'm using that blend of stearic and subtle to start with. But if you don't have both stearic acid and subtle alcohol, you could just use cetyryl alcohol instead. Our emulsifier is the oh so very cool and very versatile glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. If you want to learn more about this emulsifier, I've written a lot about it in the encyclopedia and for it over at humblebeeandme.com. But one way to explain its awesomeness is that it's kind of like driving in standard rather than driving in automatic. You just have quite a lot more control over your emulsions. And so you really do need this specific emulsifier for this formulation because that gear shifting <laughs> ability is really important here. The OT goodness in this formulation comes from two ingredients. I've included some soothing colloidal oatmeal that is in our oil phase, even though it is a water soluble ingredient, because if you put it in the water phase, it kind of turns into like a gloppy porridge as it heats and cooks through and it doesn't do that in the oil phase but then of course you combine the phases you're in there with your immersion blender disperses beautifully you just don't kind of have to deal with like sh scraping this like thick viscous slimy porridge blah uh, out of the beaker and our other OD ingredient is hydrolyzed oat protein for added moisturizing goodness. I haven't added any fragrance or essential oils to this formulation. Made as is, it has just kind of a soft oaty scent to it. If you would like to add an essential oil or a fragrance oil, you absolutely can. I have linked to some articles on how to do that, on how to tweak the formulation to keep everything in balance. So that is all linked in the partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. As always, there's also all kinds of other super helpful information in that partner blog post, information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to purchase all of the ingredients, and links to a selection of other articles that I think you might find helpful as you are making this formulation. All right, I think that's enough chat. Let's go make this gorgeous, rich almond oat emulsified body butter. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our heated oil phase in a beaker that you can fit the head of your immersion blender in. So you'll need three grams of glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. And it has to be this emulsifier. To learn more, please make sure you're reading the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on it. You'll need 10 grams of sweet almond oil. And you could use a different lightweight oil if you are allergic to nuts or don't have almond oil. Obviously this is part of the almond oat theme, but something like apricot kernel oil or safflower oil would also work beautifully. Three grams stearic acid and two and a half grams colloidal oatmeal. Our heated water phase. In this beaker, I already have 54.7 grams of distilled water. To that, I'm going to add 10 grams vegetable glycerin and two grams panthenol or vitamin B5. Before we heat anything through, I'm going to weigh the water phase and note that weight so that we can make sure to replace any water loss to evaporation during heating. To heat everything through, we are going to use a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan that has about two thirds of an inch or two centimeters of water in the bottom of it. The amount of water is not super important. You want it to be enough that it comes you know, fairly high up the sides of your beakers. That'll help everything heat through faster, but not so much that you know the beakers start floating like a message in a bottle. I'm going to go put this on my stove over medium low heat for 20 to 30 minutes until you know everything in the oil phase has melted through. Though keep in mind the colloidal oatmeal is not going to melt, but you won't see you know bits of subtle alcohol or the emulsifier in there. And then you know, our phases will be the same temperature and we shall carry on. Now that everything is heated through, you can remove your water bath from the heat. 
So I'm just going to begin by topping off the water phase with a note that, uh, with the weight that we noted earlier. I've got a bit of preheated distilled water here and just add, add back what vanished. And then combine our phases and then give that quick stir. You can see it's already getting milky, always a good sign. Grab our immersion blender and give this a nice blend. Okay, so that was about 45 seconds of blending at full speed. You know, we're working up to it so we're not making a big mess. This is still, as you can see, you know, a very thin liquid and it's still really quite warm. But now I'm just going to kind of carry this over to my computer, pop it on like a coaster, and I'm going to reply to blog comments and you know write blog posts and reply to emails and stuff. And every now and then just reach over and you know give this a bit of a stir as it cools. So I will see you when this has cooled to room temperature and has thickened up nicely. 20 minutes later, we have a beautiful room temperature, thick, glossy, gorgeous emulsified body butter. So when you are cooling with just hand stirring, there's a period in the kind of two to five minute range where you need to be pretty diligent about stirring because you start getting kind of these thick blobs floating on top. And so if you're not stirring uh, fairly frequently during that time, those can get difficult to reincorporate, or you just might need to grab your immersion blender again and give it a quick little th th to uh, get things to reincorporate. But yeah, kind of once you've passed that little hurdle, just a stir every few minutes will give you an idea of how things are coming along. But doesn't this look lovely? Our next step is weighing out our cool down phase, which is just three ingredients. You need 0.3 grams vitamin E or tocopherol. And to learn more about the vitamin E that we use in formulating, please make sure you're looking it up in the Humblebee and Me Encyclopedia. You'll need half a gram of Liquid Dermal Plus. This is our preservative. If you are thinking you might like to use a different preservative, I have a whole FAQ on how to kind of think through that and determine if it will work. <laughs> uh, so make sure you are checking that out. I've linked to it in the partner blog post. And then our last ingredient is four grams of hydrolyzed oat protein. Once your cool down phase has been weighed out, you want to add a dollop of the emulsion to the cool down phase dish, and then we'll give a stir to combine. I like to kind of cut it in a bit like this first, because if you really start going in like this, you can see that the thin liquid can start sloshing out. So a bit of this kind of cutting it in with the end of the whisk before you start really whisking it in helps prevent a mess. Once this mixture is nice and smooth, we will transfer it back to the parent batch and then stir everything together to combine. Once that's done, all that's left is packaging. For packaging, I'm going to use this 100 milliliter frosted plastic screw top jar. So this is from Yellow Bee. And so you will have seen me use their black ones and their white ones before, but now they have these, which are very cool. And I believe a Yellow Bee exclusive. Uh, this was gifted. And if you would like to buy some or look at them, uh, they are linked in the partner blog post. for a bit of an application demo. Grab the bit I spilled on the counter there. It spreads around very nicely. It is a relatively rich product. You know, it is an emulsified body butter, so I, I you know, did want it to have some lovely richness to it, but compared to an anhydrous body butter, it is really quite light. It's just got a kind of a soft, slightly oaty scent, but really nothing strong. And yeah, just a, a lovely, richly moisturizing almond oat emulsified body butter. I also wanted to show you one that I made a few weeks ago that has been sitting so you can see how, you know, the, the consistency comes out after it's had a chance to sit for a while. So it is a little bit firmer than this one that we just made. 
but it's definitely still like soft and scoopable and creamy and hasn't gotten you know, brittle or overly hard. And there we are. So we just made a gorgeous, rich, glossy almond oat emulsified body butter made with colloidal oatmeal, sweet almond oil, and shea butter. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please remember to read the full partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. You'll find a lot more helpful information there, information on substitutions, shelf life, scaling, just heaps of great extra stuff. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time.